Hey guys, Russell with Two Trail Hikers here. So, we're out in the uh, RV today, and we're going to be doing an upgrade. You can see I got the electrical panel pulled out uh, from its cubby here. We've got the Vegas 25.3, and a while back I did the inverter install, and I'll link to the video up here on the inverter itself, and then I'll drop another link up here for the actual install video where we hooked everything up and ran the switch up front to control it and got everything set up. So the next project that we're going to tackle as far as upgrades go in our RV is adding a surge protector. So we uh, wanted really to do a hard wire. Uh, it's just a little bit simpler. Um, right now the coach is unplugged from shore power. There's no connection out there. Uh, the generator's off so there's no power coming into the electrical panel from the 120 volt side. So I don't have to worry about getting shocked. But the thing of it being is this hardwired surge guard surge protector retails at $259.99. And we actually got it for $189.23 at Camping World in Asheville, North Carolina. Um, we actually went up there and this was one of the key things that we went to purchase. We bought a couple of other things that we're gonna do upgrades to the RV. Um, in preparation for our trip to Alaska and I'll be doing videos on each one of those upgrades so if you haven't subscribed go ahead and subscribe now um, give us a thumbs up hit that subscribe button for sure because we're going to be coming to you with more videos and in about two and a half weeks or so we're going to have a big announcement coming out that uh, may interest a lot of you and you want to be subscribed so you get that update. But back to the surge guard here. So basically after doing the research and looking at the specifications for the Onan generator, the 4000 model, there is no surge guard in the generator as well. So that being said, initially I was going to put this just on the shore power. That's not going to work because if we're running off a generator, we still run the risk of the generator surging um, one of the key features that I really like about this model is it has a high voltage and low voltage cutout. So if the voltage goes too high, it'll stop. It'll cut the power off going to the coach. If the voltage goes too low, it'll cut the power off. Um, it does miswired pedestals, open neutral or open ground. Um, basically anything that could cause electrical damage in your coach, it's going to take care of it. Now for us, with going out and traveling and everything else, we have cameras plugged up, we have laptops, we have computer plugged up, we've got our microwave, we've got our inverter in here, we've got our converter, all this stuff that's electrical that basically if it gets a surge voltage or runs at too low a voltage, it's going to damage it. So what we're going to do today is I'm actually going to walk you through the installation of the surge guard as I do it in the RV. And I emphasize again, the shore power is unplugged from the coach and from the 30 amp receptacle outside. So there's no connection on the exterior and the generator is shut off. So there's no power coming into this. You could use a test meter or whatever and verify that there's no, no power coming in if you want to. So basically, the first thing I'm going to do is this big orange lead back here. That is our primary 30 amp circuit coming into our control box. So what I'm going to do is actually disconnect it from the electrical panel so we can pull the wire out and then cut it, splice it into the surge protector and from there we'll be able to wire everything up. So bear with me I'm going to take this loose at the breaker and I'm going to take it loose at the neutral bar and at the ground bar. So there's a black wire, a white wire, and a just a bare copper wire that comes in and ties into all this. And once it's tied in, that completes your circuit for AC current. So give me just a minute. I'm going to get this disconnected. Once I get it disconnected, I'm going to get the camera moved into this compartment, get some lighting in there so you can see where I'm going to mount the surge protector. And the problem we're going to have is we're not going to be able to see the lights back here. 
but they do offer a remote so I'm probably going to be picking that up soon and I'll just plug the remote in and run it out to an access point here probably up front where we ran the uh, switch for the inverter put it right there that way we can monitor our surge protector remotely and we don't have to get in here and see it so stick with me and we'll be right back in just a minute so now we've got this in here and basically what I've done is this is mounted over on the opposite side from where the inverter is over here and right now I mean you can see it's just loose what I'm trying to do now is get an idea of where to cut my line and it looks like if I cut it about right there where I've been it then I'm going to have enough to tie into there and then I'll be able to come over tie into here and run it straight into our electrical panel and we should have enough wire there uh, might could go a little bit shorter you know just to give me a little extra so what we're going to do is come in here and cut this off just like that now we need to skin this back some just like that there's that I know we're 10 gauge wire so it said to strip roughly a half inch so there's a half inch on the white and about a half inch on the black okay so now we got our supply line disconnected or cut loose and it's ready to be installed into the circuit here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take the screws out, pull this out where I can lay it down and hook it up without having to, I'm at a really awkward angle back here trying to get to that. So I'll probably cut the video because of the noise because I know this is gonna be super loud. So we got that out. Now, I'm gonna loosen up the three screws here and I'll show you this in just a second. These three center screws are loosened up. This one's somewhat green, this one's silver, and this one looks to be black. I'm gonna look at the wiring diagram that came with the unit and ensure that that's gonna be black, white, and green that goes in there. And that is correct. So what we'll do now is get our wires in. Once it's seated, we're going to tighten it down. I want to ensure these are good and tight. I don't want to over tighten them, but at the same time, I want to make sure that nothing's going to pull loose. Because as most of you know that own RVs, I mean, you're basically driving through a hurricane going down the road. Now, let's get the neutral put in here. Just like that. I'm going to try to put the ground in too while I'm here. Because this wire is super stiff. There we go. Okay. So now, it's got everything seated in. We're going to tighten everything down. 
Make this a little bit easier on me. I think you got the general idea. So I can get in here and tighten this up good. So now, that's our shore power connected to our surge protector. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to do the same thing with the end that I cut off right here. And I'm going to strip this back, peel the insulation off just like I did this one, strip the wires, and put it all in on this side. And this one is black, white, green, just in conjunction with this one over here. Once that's done, I'll put the little plastic covers on and then mount it up on the panel there. And the key thing about this is this is going to protect us no matter what. Whether we have a surge from the generator, whether we have a surge in the power, there's a power drop. Um, you know, I don't know that it'll actually protect against lightning strikes. I don't know of... <laughs> really hardly anything that can handle that kind of electrical voltage um you know working in a fire service i mean we've seen it blow panels loose from the wall and blow receptacles out and explode modems and i mean it's just it's kind of crazy how destructive that lightning really is um It's just not something to play around with for sure, and it's not something that man can control. <coughs> all right, so we got a strip back there. Now we're gonna come back in here, we're gonna loosen all three of these up, just like we did on the other side. That's got our leads inserted there, so we're gonna tighten this back down. And once I get these snug, we'll be ready to mount this back up on the wall there. And, you know, looking at it, it's only got three screws that are going to hold it. But three screws are going to be plenty. It's not going anywhere. It's not going to run the risk of being hit or anything like that. I mean, let's face it. If something comes in here and hits it, it's going to tear the whole electrical system out of the RV. Um, and we're going to have bigger problems than just the surge protector being destroyed okay. double check these all right so now we got those good and tight so now i'm going to use my pre-existing holes that i had and mount this up in the wall there I can get twisted around. This electrical panel just will not come out far enough to get out of the way completely. So it's it's kind of aggravating to an extent. But, I mean, that's part of it. Okay. Let's see here. All right. Now, it might get a little loud here. started Got us two. And get this third one in.
All right. So that's got our surge guard mounted in place, intact, nice and secure. And now it comes with these little covers, but I mean, they just stick in there. I, I don't even think that they snap lock anything at all. So I think they're probably gonna fall out and judging from the looks of it. <laughs> apparently, I've already lost one of them. Oh, it fell out right here. Okay, so we'll put this one in now. And see, that's just it. I mean, they don't, I don't know, they don't snap in or anything, so. Okay, so let me pause the camera and drag it out of there. And uh, we'll get the panel hooked up and then we can test the system. All right, so I got my orange wire ran back into the panel here. And my ground circuit is hanging out right here. So we're gonna have to bend it around and get it put in place. And I tell you, if you don't have one of these, one of these south wire, I think it's like seven and one or something. Um, you need to get one. I'll put a link to it down in the description below. Um, I'll also have a link to the surge guard in the description down below from Amazon if you don't have a camping world close by. Um, I, you know, we ran up on a great deal as far as buying it from Camping World at the price we got it at. I really just, I was blown away to get it that cheap, really. Uh, I thought we were going to have to spend, you know, $300 to get a good quality surge unit with voltage protection and everything so for us to look up and get it at that deal and uh, it's memorial day weekend right now so i don't know if that's a uh like just a memorial day weekend sale or what it is exactly but super good deal 180 bucks or 189 and then on top of that i think we had like a 15 dollar off coupon to, uh, I think it was $15 off our next purchase or something we got. Um, we're Good Sam members, so I guess that's part of it. I'm not 100% sure. But what we're doing right now is just putting the, the three wires that we took loose um, back in. And if y'all haven't watched the YouTube video that we did on the inverter install, go back and watch it. Um, there was numerous connections in this panel that were loose. Um, we found a couple of breakers that were loose. We found several of the 12 volt connections that were loose. Matter of fact, the main battery cable feeding the 12 volt system just fell out. I mean, when I pushed on the wire, it just fell out. Which, I mean, I had to take it out to do the inverter install anyway. But still, yet yeah, it just... You know, I know. It, and it goes back. And that's what I'm actually doing right now. Is I'm just going through and double-checking all the connections. Because, I mean, we drove... We drove over 7,000 miles across country. Um, from South Carolina... Uh, Washington, Oregon, California, um, down the coast. So, and then we came back across. There's bound to be something that's loose. So, um, one quick thing while we're here. For those of you who have a Vegas 25.3 pre-wired for solar. Ours is a 2017 chassis, 2018 model coach. This Orange and white wire right here is from your pre-wired solar connectors up on the roof. They are inside of this panel, wrapped up in one of these little convalescent tubings or convoluted or plastic wire wrap, wrapped up in here. So when we get ready to do our solar, this will be where we'll get our connections from for our equipment. All right, so. Let me take the camera. I'm gonna put it back inside here so you can actually see what's going on. 
and I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna plug the shore power in and uh, see what we get. And if I'm reading the instructions correctly, it has a startup delay. So the line light is gonna be green and when you plug it in, the delay indicator is flashing and the line lights are green. Once caution light stops flashing, it takes 128 seconds. Verify RV power is on. So that was exactly correct. It takes it roughly two minutes to go through its test cycles and uh, power up. So now what I'll do is kill the shore power and fire up the generator and make sure it's going to come on and work. All right, shore power's off. Now we'll fire the generator up. All right, so the generator's on. It should come up to voltage. And I should hear the transfer switch over there click. All right, transfer switch just clicked. So now we've got that delay. All right, that was 123 seconds and it flipped on. So we got power by a generator, we got power by a shore power. We're hooked up and protected. guys so that's it I mean we are officially hooked up here uh, I hope you enjoyed the video um, I hope it helps somebody out along the way you know if you're thinking about a uh, surge protector the surge guard seems to be a good one I don't know if that 128 second delay is consistent with all surge protectors um, those of you that have them already, either the hardwired or the pedestal mount ones, either one, um, drop me a comment down below and let me know if yours has a delay or if it doesn't have a delay. Uh, I can be kind of curious to hear. I kind of don't like it, but if that's the price I got to pay for, you know, the security knowing that when we go 3,600 miles across the country here, that we're gonna be protected no matter where we plug in and even with the generator and stuff, it's, I guess it's that peace of mind. I'm willing to sacrifice the 128 seconds or however long it takes in order for that to take place. So I got a little bit of cleanup to do here and get everything picked up, tools put up. But guys, I really appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, like I said before, definitely hit that subscribe button. We're prepping stuff right now to do a trip to Alaska. We're gonna have a big announcement coming in about two and a half weeks. So hit the subscribe button, stay tuned with us, and we're gonna be coming to you with more content. And uh, we appreciate you following along. So hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, drop it in the comment, and be sure and share these videos. Thanks.